Hi, this is Jar Citizen Gamer. Just kind of want to do an impromptu review of the Python uh, for Elite Dangerous. Now, I had the ship a long time ago, uh, back before it received kind of a gigantic nerf. But to be fair, it was kind of a bit overpowered. Uh, you could ram anacondas to death with it. It was really quite uh, a ridiculously overpowered vessel. And when they they made changes to bring it more in line. Unfortunately, they made it massively weak. It was uh, such a major flip-flop that I, I got rid of it. Well, I started checking the forum boards and I started to read that uh, the Python was, well, it was uh, very useful again. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and uh, I melted all my ships down. And I said, you know, this is really the ship that I wanted the most because the way I've got it set up right now carries 192 tons, as you can see there in the capacity. Uh, I managed to have a, uh, let me scroll through my list here. I haven't upgraded the armor yet, and I haven't upgraded the power plant to A, but that's going to be like 50 million credits, and I don't have enough, as you can see, to do that just yet. Everything else is sitting pretty. I go with life support and sensors at D because they weigh uh, very little, and I don't see a whole lot of difference, and I've rarely had use for either one of these. Uh, I mostly play in an in, in elite uh, PvE capacity, uh, cargo runs and doing asteroid uh, combat and exploration and things like that. So this ship is pretty much set to do everything I want to do um, at 192 tons of cargo and the fact that it is still classified as a medium ship so you can land on any station, any outpost, any large station, any planet. And that's one of the things I love best about it. And this has really kind of been the ship that I kind of wanted to sit on as being the one. Because to me, the large uh, ships do require large docking bays. They are, you know, when you can't use outposts, so to me that's a major handicap. And with the, the cargo capacity, the weapon loadouts, everything on the ship, it really is just great. Uh, as you can see here, I've got uh, two different... Uh, uh, rovers. That's hopefully when uh, they get multiplayer in, get one ship and two people in there, and they can explore a planet together. A shield cell uh, cell bank for when things get really bad out there. Fuel scoop, advanced discovery scanner, and of course planetary approach suite. I don't have the planetary uh, the, the planetary scanner. Um, lose a little bit of money there from the exploration side of things, but to be honest with you, exploration doesn't pay that much anyway. I'm more interested in just getting the rank up so as opposed to the money, so this will work just fine for my needs. Of course, for the livery, uh, I get the uh, pre-ordered the expansion of Horizon, so I get this black skin on. This is very, very pretty. Um, doesn't look like I can take it off. <laughs> yeah. It's better than the default color. I think it looks really nice. And, uh, yeah, the hard points on it, I got two size three uh, pulse lasers, and these do a really good job now targeting subsystems, scorched or gimbaled, and uh, taking that shields very quickly. You can kill an anaconda very quickly with these, especially up close. A fixed point plasma accelerator on the underside that just looks damn sexy, and uh, as a nice uh, chin weapon there. And, of course, two uh, multi-cannon size 2s. I really do want to see them get some size 3 multi-cannons into this game soon. Because I would love to have this chin weapon actually be a size 3 multi-cannon to pair with these. But I felt putting a size 2 multi-cannon down here would kind of be shortchanging myself. You know, uh, to a degree. Since it, since it can fit that, you know, might as well go ahead and just put that on there. Uh, but... Yeah, the, I use these also mostly for after the shields are down and taking out subsystems. I'm big into subsystems targeting. It really makes your job a lot easier when you don't actually have to just worry about the hull. You take out their power plant or something, they're dead in space, and you can just, you know, kill them at your leisure. One of the things they did uh, with the ship that made it so much weaker after the nerf was they really reduced the shields. I mean, the thing was a, was a monster tank before. It was just ridiculous. But with the sh four shield boosters I threw on here... I'd say it's about 85% of where it was originally. And I'm fine with that because, you know, honestly, the ship was a little overpowered to begin with. And I get things had to be adjusted to keep, you know, keep things in balance. She flies well. I uh, really don't have any complaints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take her out to the nearby asteroid field and show you how she handles in combat. And this isn't going to be a real long video, but I just wanted to give you a, a nice overview of the ship as it's, you know, been changed. 
and uh, all those explorers out there and people looking for something that's gives them access to every port, gives them good cargo, gives them decent fighting ability. Uh, this really is probably going to be the ship for you, and it's just a nice ship all around. All right, guys, I'll go ahead and uh, go to the next point. All right, so we're out here in the asteroid field, and uh, looks like we've got a, an eagle out here trying to attack a cargo ship. Not really what I would call remotely a challenge for this kind of loadout, but right now, it's the only thing I see that's spawned in that's uh, aggressive. And if you wonder uh, how I look around the cockpit this smoothly, I'm using a device called Track IR. It's really great, especially for a game like Elite, and. Uh, I really like the immersiveness of it. Don't use it all the time because sometimes you get neck cramps and whatnot from using it too much or whatnot. But it is a really, uh, really great tool. And I uh, plan to be using a lot of it in Star Citizen for gimbal use and whatnot once they get it reinitialized. Uh, and right now, unfortunately, it's disabled. But that will be rectified, I'm sure. Target shields offline. As I said, not a problem for the ship. <laughs> Target destroyed. Let's see if we can keep going around a little bit, find something a little bit more worth our time. Here's hoping. Okay, it looks like Scan detected. I found something a little bit better here. You're gonna fly into me, aren't you, you jerk? No! Oh! <laughs> Alright, so this guy is, uh, he's wanted. First thing I'm going to do is get that power plant targeted. Guess having guns out would be helpful, huh? Alright. This is where, uh, one of the things I like about the, the gimbal system in this, he popped the chaff, and of course you can't, uh, can't hit for anything once he's done that. You have to wait till the chaff wears out. But I think it's a great system for balancing off. Uh, gimbal energy weapons do about 18% less damage than uh, fixed ones. But for a ship this large, it's really more expedient to use uh, uh, gimbals because it's such a slow-turning ship that really you flight assist off. Really, you're better off just doing it that way. Flight assist on. Oh, here he goes again. Haven't even managed to hit a subsystem yet, but I haven't been very close either. That's a big thing about subsystems. You need to be close for it to count. I'm just doing a fair amount to my shield. Nothing, nothing major. Flight assist off. Flight assist off. Oh, he's elite. That's why he's doing so well. Didn't even pay attention to that, trying to make a video. His tactics did seem better. Most of the times, these guys aren't even an issue. Oof. <laughs> Let's get serious with him then. He's just gimbling it all up. Might as well go ahead and boost my shields up a little bit. Warning. Temperature critical. He really likes to get close and try to ram me, doesn't he? Ah, jerk. See how, when I got close, see how, how quickly I shredded his subsystem? This won't be much longer. Boom. He's out of power. He's done. I can do whatever I want to him now. Normally I get it done much faster than that. Normally it's like still 80% haul, but... Oh, that's satisfying. So that's a good amount of money. 
spend an hour or so at one of these places, you can make quite a chunk of change. All right, let's go ahead and head back in. I just wanted to show you that real quick. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and take her back in, and uh, I hope you uh, liked my thoughts on this ship. I really do feel that this is probably one of the most solid all-around vehicles. Uh, the other one probably right below this is the ASP. And uh, because I can get that thing to do anything I want combat-wise for the most part. Uh, exploration, uh, cargo, and it's so flexible, it's so flexible. This ship has that kind of flexibility in it as well, just uh, more cargo, uh, better uh, uh, armament, of course, better Landing shields. Oh, they would go ahead and put me right here, wouldn't they? I don't like the ones where they, they're right inside the entrance. It feels like I'm... There's this thing they, uh, with the cockpit. So I feel like I could slam my butt like right on the entrance of the station when I try to turn down that quick. Alright, that was not a Jingles landing, so we're good. Alright guys, well this is Jarvis Citizen Gamer. Catch you next time.